The video games industry is one of the most innovative and fastest growing industries in the world. The men and women of this industry work tirelessly to provide entertainment for the masses. And some of these provide the music. Music that we love. Music that we listen to when we're enjoying ourselves playing those video games. Big video games. Music that we love. Music that we listen to when we're enjoying ourselves listening to video games. Big video games. Do we even know who these people are? No. Would video games be the same without them? No. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Average Giants. Well, hello there. See, I did that one more calm down than normal, so you don't make fun of me. <laughs> no, no, no. I ha you, there, there's got to be energy, and I'm not making it's, fun of you. I'm adding to the energy. Oh, I see. That's much energy you add. Uh, Whoa, so, energy. <laughs> my name is <laughs> The Average Gamer, and joining me, as always, is the dude with the light in his camera. Hey, I'm... <laughs> I'm 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 Trafalgar Snicker Bars. Ah, Trafalgar Snicker Bottom. Snick Snicker Bottom. bottom. Snicker Bottom. Okay, that's better than. Well, you just call me Giant. Uh, I'm just saying you need to exercise. <laughs> what are we playing tonight, Giant? We are playing Celestial Turn See Demon's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're still unsure if it's Tear or Terra, so we have. The developers in the call with us, um, who are going to say hello in just a second. You guys know them as Trexel and Yinyanima. Yim Yamina. Always get that wrong. <laughs> because they're always in chat. They're always How like, dare you! They're like one of our biggest fans, and they're one of my favorite guests to have on the show. How's it going, guys? We're going good. Sweet! So, is it Tear or Tear? We never remember. I call it she calls it... She calls it... Tear? I always say tear. No, she calls it tear, but then oh, no, she uses a lot of tear references. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not. She confuses me. But like in the in the newer version, the save point is shaped like a tear. Oh, okay, there you go. So I, but it's supposed to be tear, like she says, tear, a tear, and a universe or something like that. That's how she's explained it. I don't know. It's tear. <laughs> you should yeah. just name. You should rename it Celestial Tear Demons Tear. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just piss everybody off. Just <laughs> call it, yeah, Tears Tear Celestial. Uh, so it's been a little while, and that's kind of on purpose because we had you guys on the show a while back, and yeah. then you ended up doing a Kickstarter. How did that go? Um, our Kickstarter journey is a unique one. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, with that, I think after we actually got the funding, before we were able to do a lot of things more quickly, and um, I don't know, it's it's a lot of things that I can say about that. We actually got in touch with a publisher, and they helped us out with a lot of things. Um, and then, even after that, I continue to do research on what makes games good and about advertising and things so Kickstarter was kind of like my our training ground for what we needed to do as we went forward and I think it for a lot of people once they get into that um, fundraising for your game and doing a try to get your game out there you start to notice that just making a game is not the only thing you need to do mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. it, it goes yeah it goes to a, a lot of different things you gotta kind of have to be business minded, and from that I was just doing a lot of research, a lot of research, trying to keep in touch with our backers, and try to keep people in interested. In it. At the same time, trying to make sure that we had the elements which would make a game good. Some of the things that philosophy that we had before, we may not have them now, but uh, it's it's been a journey. He yeah, has. That's cool, and I know that uh, you guys, you did get a Kickstarter in the end. Um, you did get the successful Kickstarter. It's been a little while since that. So yeah. right now, we're going to be showing off the first version of the game that we play. And then yeah. later on in the show, we're hopefully going to try and see um, where you guys have come since then. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. So the last, we, uh, uh, last time you guys were on... Uh, we had the demo. 
yeah. of the game. And basically what we learned from just the demo alone is that this game is massive. <laughs> yeah, the demos. Yes. The de even the demo is massive. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. that's the one of the I'd say one of the most interest one of the coolest selling points is the fact mm -hmm. that you can play so much of the game and just you'll get a really good feel for the game and it's not like one of those ones where you get to walk 10 feet and then it's like well see you next time <laughs> yeah <laughs> you've made 11 steps please pay for the game now <laughs> <laughs> and i think the way to actually have the game because being trying to make a massive game like that takes a lot of uh a lot of capital oh, yeah. a lot of fun and um, time. Yeah, especially yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> yes, yes, oh, especially everything. that, and uh, especially when you're trying to make it at, to a certain, uh, like to a certain tier, you kind of don't want to seem like you're. Yeah, we're, we're 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 trying to be above the standards. Yeah, you have the standards are set, and then you have you're able to do, and then what you're able to push yourself to do. So of course we had our, our uh, people like our artists who was able to do the comic art and things like that, and then also with us ourselves we had our own unique skills that we were able to work off each other with, and then you have to have with well, RPGs you got to have great music, with RPGs you got to have great story, and then what a lot of people don't believe is that you don't have to have great visuals. I think the visuals have to be a certain extent for whatever you're working on in order for it to be appreciated. Because now we. Oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, because we, we just started the intro up, and it, it's quiet, so I'm talking over it here. Um, but one of the cool things about the visuals in this game is the, the comic book style art that you guys have done, which I absolutely love. <laughs> yeah. For uh, When I was doing my research on it, that could actually either be a great risk when it comes to doing an RPG, or it can be one of your strengths, because it's kind of being unique out there, but with the RPG... Um, genre most of it is based on anime art and that's really what people buys into so at the same time we wanted to be unique but we wanted to still keep people interested and do something different so when we went with the comic book art it's kind of a risk because a lot of people they're more they see anime art they see those big eyes they see those little girls in school dresses and they get excited about that <laughs> The, the 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 J dating sims and whatnot. Yeah, it, it, and those things are big. So, with what we uh, wanted to do, we kind of wanted to change that formula, and uh, not change it. Well, just just the, the art style. Yeah, and a lot of things that we want. Because I, yeah. I typically like the. Yeah. One thing um, I read somebody uh, I got I have I was, when I was doing my research again uh, I have read some. Somebody said something that made a lot of sense to me, and he was saying why. You know, a lot of times Final Fantasy hasn't made the same numbers since Final Fantasy VII. At least hasn't been that oh, yeah. big, notable of a game. Yeah. And uh, the guy was, he had said something. It kind of spoke to me. I kind of understood what he was saying. He was like the JRP genre. I'm sorry. Yeah, the JRPG genre is more. It's better when it's kind of put out there like a cartoon that you can always come back to. And kind of play episodes so you can have like the corny type of writing in there but even at the same time when you have uh and you can have the fantasy settings and things like that he said once you get to the ultra realistic looking and you kind of get to like the uh the try to take your story a bit too serious that's when you start to lose a lot of people mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I think a lot of games need to realize is that if you don't have um, a sense of humor about your about the game and about the whole process, then you almost end up being sort of like a bit stuffy. Yeah, you're stuffy. I'm stuffy. <laughs> Stop taking me seriously. <laughs> but yeah, also, it's, uh, it's oh, just cool. been. A, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a, a couple uh, games. Uh, you know, in the games where they're trying to, I, I understand that they're trying to put a bit of them, a bit of them, their their mind and their uh, maybe their uh, mental state or their you know put put a deep serious meaning into the game, and sometimes that could actually hinder the 
the whole process of it. I mean, it's yeah. good to put emotion into the game, but to be as like, no, this is no, this is a se- this is too serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it is a game after all. Sorry, guys. One quick sec. Oh, hang on. yeah, all with me. I think fun should be your number one priority when it comes to making a game. I know some games are made to kind of make you like depressed <laughs> or. Well, of course, scared, like, but still, fun is behind being scared. Like the Resident Evil games, there's fun behind being scared. Or the, yeah. the early Resident <laughs> Evil game, there's fun behind, the fun behind being scared. The Silent Hill game, is fun behind being scared. <laughs> well, yeah, like a, a serious in that respect, like horror genre or something like that, that's, that's fairly understandable. Oh, we love it. But then you're like you're. Some people are like, well, I mean, you know, you. It's almost like you're you're supposed to think more about the underlying. Uh, um, yeah. You know the the, the underlying uh, story about it that you know re- to, to, uh, directly relates to uh, the the person's uh, m- mental state as they uh, created it, and then it's like oh. Because we actually played a game like yeah. that. <laughs> we played a game like that, and it was, it was very strange. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I won't, I won't <laughs> name names <laughs> just in case. <laughs> oh, never mind. I didn't say anything then. <laughs> What'd you say? You didn't say the L word. I was just wondering, yeah, which one it was. Is the L word? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I actually, um, a good friend of ours, uh, Noetic Games, guys behind See No Evil, finally, finally, finally announced mm-hmm. their new game today. And uh, I've been talking with him oh, about did, it. Oh, did he announce it? Yeah, it's called um, uh, Blue Sheep. And it's all about this nine-year-old girl that's kind of dealing with mental illness and that kind of stuff. Going through oh, wow. the experiences of her older brother. And yeah, it's kind of interesting because they're trying to deal with these human emotions in that game as well. So, it, it, you know, little side note, little side relation. It was kind of cool enough. I guess that will that will go into the category of gaming experience rather than yeah. the the basis of fun gaming because gaming experience kind of take you out, out of that and kind of puts you in another place. You're you're not here for fun. You're here for the experience. It's more like uh, and you're here to be a part of it. I know mm-hmm. games like uh, well, what's a good example? Telltale Games does that a lot with their with not their uh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead is a gaming experience, or well, at least we, that's the, that's going to be the word I'm using for. It's sort of a gaming experience. You really don't play much of it, but you feel a lot. There's so there's interaction there, but you feel more so than often. So they're really banking on the type of motion where they can give you rather than the type of gaming experience you have. Mm-hmm. Cause you don't do much in that game, do you? You kind of like press it. Like around. It's like a, it's like a game full of uh, QTEs. And that's another thing that we were talking about. And I I keep explaining to Whitney. You know, I'm, I'm I guess I'm going like I said. This, this is going to be more like a developer commentary. One one of the biggest things that I always, you know, uh, I was doing research on what makes a good game. And most of the time, what makes games different than uh, cinematic experiences. Is that you want to become a part of it, and and that's and that's one thing that we uh, really wanted to put into that at the beginning of when we first started making this game, and we had that uh, the initial demo that you're playing right there, and something that we didn't actually get off the ground there, because a lot of times people would say, well, I don't like turn-based combat because you don't really, you know, you just press the A button, you press the A button, that's all you do. Mm. And I think one of, one of our goals there was to expand on that. People say that the JRP genre is, yeah, I'm sorry, the JRPG genre <laughs> uh, doesn't has not evolved in a long time. But the reason I will say that it has, but it's and the reason why they're not. And the yeah, the reason why they're because not because we're expecting yeah, the old stuff. It's that just that it's just it's not that it hasn't been evolving it's just that once something is set and this game is known as one of the best games of all time for the chrono trigger chrono trigger trigger. Mm -hmm. the way that that game was made was that it hit every single point 
that a, a game, not just a JRPG, but that a game actually needed in order for, for you to feel that full experience. So once games got away from what that was, the JRPG had lots of elements to it. They have the world maps. They have different cities where you can, depending on the type of game, you can go there any time that you want to, which kind of built off of the open, open world experiences was the initial JRPG. They had open world experiences. You don't have to go to this city. You can go to that city over there. You don't have to go to that dungeon. You can go to that forest over there. So you had that choice. And I think that's one of the things I try to explain to Whitney when she um, when she's making maps is that you want to give choice or you want to make them feel that everywhere they go they have a choice. If you walk on a map and there's a box there, you have a choice to either pick up that box or leave it. Either way, you made that choice when you walked on the map and therefore when you have many choices like that you feel as though you're 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 changing something. Even those little the little facet of things, you feel that you've changed something in the world by either leaving that box or walking by it. Because they're giving you the options to do it. I think believe I was um, reading something about uh, Super Mario. When you play Super Mario Brothers and you go into the screen you have the little boxes where you can jump up and you can smash them. You have the enemies where you can jump them when you can pick up the uh, the shell. Or whenever you just regular jump, you have the option you can change direction in the air. So give that. That's why that game is so fun, and that game is you know still being done today is because those choices that were in that game. And that's just I guess that's one element which uh, makes games good. And talking about like uh, the the choice and the different elements that make it good. Uh, one of the things that I love in Celestial Tier is uh, your guys' combat system. Because yeah. you, you do take kind of a, a classic JRPG style combat system and you just spruce it up a little bit. And I'm I'm just kind of walking around the open world map fighting right now, so would you mind, uh, like, what was the, the idea behind the combat or how, what have you guys done to kind of make it more engaging? Well, what we've done so far, there's, a lots, of, there's lots of things that's actually in it. But that we didn't uh, actually put out there, or, or we didn't use yet, or that wasn't, that hasn't been executed well, well is enough. well enough. Is um, the addition of combos, and the way that we do this is is very simple. And I guess I'm kind of getting this a little from Chrono Cross, bit, and a little from uh, what's the other game, um, Xeno Gears, mm -hmm. and a little from um, Legend of Legend Gaia. <laughs> And a little yeah. Legend of Dragoon, which is um, we want you to be able to feel that you don't have to just keep pressing A. We want you to feel like you have choices in order whenever you uh, make an attack. It's not just spamming the A button. So once you attack, you have um, you have options of excuse me combos. Now it really it doesn't stop there different enemies would be able to handle the way that you do your combos differently. Oh, okay. If you would, uh, certain enemies um, would be, you know, shorter enemies would be more immune to your attacking them high. And um, if you keep attacking them high, you know, you can't just keep high, high, high because you keep doing that to somebody, they're going to be able to know exactly when you're going to uh, be going to hit gonna gonna hit them in that direction so if you keep doing it in the one place they either either start to resist it or they're able to dodge it more you end up missing because you know you keep you going so you want to switch up your combos and at the same time like if flying you want to hit them high so you can hit them out the air uh, smaller enemies you want to hit them low because you don't want to miss them hitting high so we and, and another thing is the visuals with that if we want to see the visual of your characters doing these different animations when they're actually doing it. And then we have combo finishers, which is like the added icing to the cake. You do your combo, then you do your combo finisher and things like that. So it's just a bunch of, and not, and the other thing, which is the, uh, <laughs> it's a bunch of stuff to that. And <laughs> like we, we can go up to, to we go all day with that. But also the, um, the, the interactive objects, which we, have yet to really implement that well, but it's in there. Um, with that, um, within the interactive object, uh, I explained this before. Uh, depending on what's on the field, it can be a barrel, uh, it can be a, a tree, 
and we may do due to some limitation we may have to place them in certain areas mm -hmm. we may have to place them high, high or we may have to place them low and uh, depending on how you uh, go into uh, a battle or whoever you have you can do different things to these trees somebody may be able to hide behind it somebody may be able to chop it down somebody may be able to pick it up and throw it at you and you'll be able to make those choices and of course those will take points and they may even because you have we have the um, what do you call it, the CTV. So you can you may skip your turn by doing it, and we want to make it as strategic as possible. So, so, so that's it, one. Sorry. So when it came to the combat, uh, you have, you have all these different things that you wanted to, that you implemented in. It's pretty it's pretty intricate. Mm -hmm. um, how like what was the most difficult uh, aspect of the combat to uh, actually put into the game? For just coding, or for um, for making sure that it was uh, actually playable and not OP or something like that. Uh, well, one thing, one thing that we may not be able to do uh, that was added that we that we really wanted to do, and it was kind of like a glitch that was there before, which we wanted to do a um, not 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 a grid system, but sort of a. Uh, what would you call it? Um, like it's not free. It wasn't free roam either. Like you can place your characters on specific parts of the field. So if, like, let's say if everybody was bunched together and you did a a, um, a area effect skill that either like healed everybody or gave everybody more uh, attack power, and you can bunch them together. But if they if you spread them apart, then you know just only the character that's close to that particular uh, character can get that boost. So that's one thing that we wasn't able to do, and that would that could have went into a lot to do with the strategy because we also could would have had uh, the enemies be able to hit you with every of effect skills in one part, you know, and you kind of have to spread out, and maybe you want to together in a certain situation get certain enemies. So different things like that, and that I w I really hope wish that we could have that in, but that's something that may not make it in in, in the last of the game. But that's mm. one thing, and the reason the reason for that. Is dealing with the 2D plane on the engine that we use is that uh, if you have a tr if you have um, a tree like in the middle of the field and you need to run uh, to the other side and attack an enemy that going you may it may look kind of jagged it may look kind of wonky just going just passing through yeah, the tree yeah, instead of going around it and things like that so that's like a limitation. It's so basically needed. the pathfinding mm -hmm. of uh, getting from your spot to the enemy's spot or move, just moving around in general is not good <laughs> <laughs> but I think that having a um, you know having doing the, this type of RPG and this 2D uh, environment like a lot of the things that we that we try to implement is really visual because mm -hmm. uh, if you want to bring people in like the people who really don't like RPGs is, is really going to be the visuals for them. even me um, I'm not big on uh, first person shooters and I kind of laugh at Whitney about um, Tomb Raider and how they like destroyed it and made an Uncharted like a spin off of Uncharted oh yeah right yeah it was a good game but it was like a spin off of Uncharted it looked awesome. It just like and what the, the the game, the Order 1887, I think 1886. 1886. That game looks. That game looks phenomenal, but the reviews said that the, you know, they didn't offer much choice. Uh, the gameplay wasn't that wasn't done that well. But when I look at it, and I'm not a fan of those games, I look at it like. I still would. I still would play that. <laughs> we had an interesting chat on uh, WASD radio. I think they're actually in, or they were watching the show um, mm. about the order uh, 1886. Because one of the things that it got flamed on really hard was the length of time of how long yeah. the game was. And we yeah. got into this chat about how long, like how much would you pay, or how how long of a game do you expect when you pay sixty dollars? Yeah. Someone on um, YouTube, I seen, kind of broke it down, and he kind of went and and thing. He said, it, "You gotta, you gotta take it at how much you would pay for anything else, you know." And he kind of broke it down. I believe he's like five dollars an hour, five dollars an hour, hmm. for the price that he would base anything on it for movie, for television, for Netflix, anything like that. And 
from all those things he was saying of the what you could get for it and and the value that you can get all the everything that you can get from Netflix for like eight eight ninety nine. You know, even when he based it on cable, he said if he watched a certain amount of time, he already made his money back from cable. So when he was talking about the order, and he was talking about games like that, he was like, you know, and at his, the end of his statement was, there will be, as you say, he's thinking about a game that has beautiful graphics. The gameplay is, is perfect. The story is engaging. And he said, how much, and he said, take a, take a game like that, and how much would you pay for a game that's, you know, perfect? So he, he went and said things like that. But the order is certainly not perfect. But, um, you know, I guess you take different value in different things. Mm -hmm. well, then you got to go to the, uh, uh, th there's that similar um, deal with, uh, what was it, uh, the new Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid game that came out recently. Where Fan Phantom Pain. Where it was only you know, for forty bucks, it was basically a ninety minute demo. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. heard it was. Yeah. yeah. Short. Yeah, that, that's so, highway robbery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there there are some exceptions to <laughs> to that kind of thing. But I heard that was phenomenal. <laughs> as good as it was, it's hard. It, yeah, I, I, I'm one of those people that find it hard to justify paying such a high amount of money for certain games even if they're amazing just because but high amount of money you spend more than that going out to the out to the theater for a movie spend, you spend like six, 50, 60 bucks if you go here with your wife for a 90 minute movie yeah. I understand that yeah. but I guess the other problem with me is that I'm I'm you know uh, I'm a <laughs> I'm the guy that can't really uh, don't I don't have that much time to oh, yeah. really get into things so when I I mean if I see a really cool game but then if I see an exorbitant price tag on it for some reason I just it's very hard for me to justify unless it's called Grand Theft Auto and what's exorbitant <laughs> for you so that's different for everybody too right I guess it's one of those things where it's like if I can play it in bursts I got a Grand Theft I think yeah. if I can play the game in bursts then it makes it a lot uh, more realistic that for me to just for me to purchase it so, yes, uh, price is one thing, but if it looks like a game that I don't have to immerse myself for, for hours at a time just for it to be actually, uh, you know, for, for me to get anywhere in the game, then it's right. a plus. Like, Binding of Isaac, Rebirth, and Binding of Isaac is great for me because I can play for, you know, 25 minutes, die, get frustrated, and just quit, and then come back later, and you'll, you'll, I, won't, won't, uh, I won't miss anything, or I won't forget what I just did. <laughs> mm. Okay, so we have the new version of the game. This is build 1.07. Um, right. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to expect to see different. Okay. This one is all. This so one is scary. not <laughs> as polished <laughs> That's as okay. the previous one. This That's one okay. is certainly not as polished. But you Average will Giants warning we may break this game. <laughs> <laughs> no. May. So. So there's a couple of things in here. I would, I would actually wish to. I think uh, one of the better things about our game is the music. So you can, I don't know if it, you can hear it here or not, but that will definitely. I'll like, turn it up a little bit. So, and also, you know, one of these actors, one of these actors, uh, I took a different role and we replaced it with somebody, but uh, she still did a, a phenomenal job. So turn, turn the voice acting may be good too. Cool. So, okay, um, well, um, let's watch the intro. Um, yeah. If if it plays, it's the same. It's the intro. same. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> if, if it plays. Okay. If it plays. If it doesn't play, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Nope. Well, it didn't play. That no, sucks. Didn't play. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So we'll go right. Oh, different intro. Oh yeah, this is the. It okay, Giant. Let's let's uh, let's voice act the crap out of this. Oh, do you, are you doing that or am I doing that? How long will I have to live with this pain? <laughs> <laughs> this loneliness, this pointless killing. Well, there goes the seriousness. <laughs> Is this all I've ever known? <laughs> you asked me to do the girl. Okay, your turn. You do her now. 
Look at me talking to myself. I've been out here far too long. How long has it been anyway? Is this for me? Has my life come to this? <laughs> Eating this fungus in this wretched place. How can I live like this with death constantly knocking on my door? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, the audio has really been improved. I should start heading back home before it gets too late. The wolves are coming out. That's my... <laughs> at least it's better than I did a... Uh, yeah. A voice for uh, right. Phantasmal the other day didn't realize that it was <laughs> for a woman, so I talked like I was just like, "Oh, it's been six days since I went." <laughs> oh, good lord! <laughs> Turns out that the character that I was reading out was actually named Jackie. Wow! Instead of like oh, so Gregory. <laughs> so, so well, one of the things if you notice that um, we added a lot of animation there to the beginning. And you yeah. see the different, and the tile style is a, is a bit different and more detailed, and kind of like, um, kind of got like a, a thicker outline around everything here. And uh, we kind of wanted to, uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to talk about every single last map. <laughs> no, please do. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, there's and, animations. <laughs> so, um, okay, now the battle is just started. So, did you guys do a lot of like sprite work and everything to? Yeah. To make it look more yeah. fluid. Tyrell did a heck of a lot of sprite work. Now, also, if you uh, well, on this map you really can't tell, <laughs> but uh, there you will experience a, a bit slowdown and and like the first battles in each area, and that's because um, we did this thing where we got these what two hundred and something frame battle animations. We had to find a way to like uh, to knock that down. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can see so, the water oh. is. Uh, so the right water right. there. You'll see that the water is moving a bit in the background. Oh, yeah. wow. There's kind of, there's kind of lighting effects there, and even when um on, and this is also randomized. So there there will be randomized objects in the foreground. There will be waterfalls in the background there, and uh, different things like that will be on these background. You can use the directions. So the directions is actually used to attack. So okay. it will be like up for up, oh, never mind. down, left and right. Oh, that's so cool. Or if, or if it's W, yeah, there you go. And there's more sound, is there more sound effects? Yeah. So yeah, there's sound effects. Even that, before you didn't have the creatures animated, when we you first were on the show, uh, the creatures wouldn't animate when they came over to attack. So this is looking already. This is, what, like a, only a couple of months since you guys were on the show, and this is yeah. unbelievable. It's a, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot more to it than than what's here now but I'm you know uh, we had problems with um, the more uh, finished version but uh, it's a lot in here now especially you see that we did uh, I'm not sure you could tell that we put a lot of frames on her her actual stance animation mm -hmm. and uh, well, yeah. the running <laughs> yeah the, the running yeah. there's actually yeah. there's actually there's a transition to the run to make that look smoother Oh, nice. So, real quick on this map, you'll notice that there's the tall grass there before, and again, we kind of wanted to do like a, um, a game design thing here, where you yep. would see that and be like, hey, I can get over there somehow. So I have to, with a, sort of like a Metro Mania thing, like uh, whenever you get a new item or something like that, but that's at, with us, it's really a new character. Did you just say Metro Mania? Yeah, because that's Metro Metrovania, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so you kind of see that and kind of think I can get over there. Uh, now, now you see now there isn't water, uh, and the there's now there's a waterfall. There isn't water in the holes now. So yeah. there's a different it, type it's of, yeah. kind of randomized, but I, I, yeah. it, it's randomized right now. But I want to make it mm -hmm. like a chance based on the location that you're at. So that's cool. There's actually no waterfall on that map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it looks good though. Yeah. Was the fog effect there before? Not like that. And here, and, and on the map, or um, or in the uh, <laughs> or in the battle. Oh, map. On, on the map, yeah, but it was different fog effect. Okay. This is more for like an inside thing. I believe we used it on another map that was over there, but. Uh, Oh, this is neat. I love how it's... it's. I'm using a controller to play. 
How was that? Yeah. How, how was that in comparison to the Kingdom? Good. It feels like I'm playing an old SNES RPG. Like I'm, I'm freaking loving this. <laughs> I believe, I believe in mind we had in mind that it was more that we wanted more uh, of it to be controller oriented. Mm -hmm. But I still need to, <laughs> I still need to figure that whole thing out. I'm glad it works though. <laughs> yeah, it's um, Archer Mar uh, gave me this controller fan on our show. And it's this crazy little third party thing, like it'll it'll light up and stuff and <laughs> Oh yeah. It's it's ridiculous, but I find it works when other controllers won't. Including like name brand Microsoft and Sony controllers. <laughs> Don't say any specific names, we might get sued. Yeah, they can <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh I just got an email, cease and desist. Oh darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Wow! Look at these oh. backgrounds. Yeah. Well, one thing I kind of was hard on Whitney with, you know, because we always have, we also we go back and forth on each other, and we we force uh, each other to to kind of up their game, whatever they're doing anything. Mm -hmm. Was whatever she <laughs> We're just like sitting on the in the middle. Oh of the yeah. Tree. Oh man. See, see, this is like the older version, so the worm is too high on the tree. But with <laughs> with the uh, <laughs> tree worm, what? <laughs> Here you can also see like this is a new background. You have the uh, the lighting effects in back of the trees. Subtle movement. You can, if you really pay attention, there's subtle movement on the grass. There's subtle movement in the trees here, and there's also little subtle leaves falling. And if you and you got some sexy J.J. Abrams style lens flare going. On. Yeah, definitely, exactly. <laughs> By the way, that sound of the worms going under the ground is creeping the crap out of me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, it's it's very good. Because <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> Worms. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Oh, 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 no! I think you probably did. Hopefully you didn't. I think I you did. I did. <laughs> I did. You, you did. And you you didn't give any, any uh rewind, so, rewind so we gotta start him. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> we are so sorry. Oh that's we are no, so no, no, sorry. Hey, it's not your nah. fault. It's all his fault. I lasted longer than uh giant playing Blade of Rage anyway, so No <laughs> I oh. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I did not grind enough. Uh, that game, I had to. I apparently should have grinded for at least another five or ten levels before mm -hmm. I could beat the level two monster. Which is funny because I think that was like the first fight in the game. Available. It was uh, <laughs> the second fight. <laughs> so just so you know, your 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 difficulty system is just fine. Yeah. Yeah, you're all good. It's just average giant, average, average gamer's fault. Uh, so we have a question in chat from Fleeting Infinity. So this should be morbid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what kind of features did you want to have polished for this version? Um, you had some issues with and were unable to. Well, um, I know Fleeting's been following um, some of our um, Kickstarter updates, and uh, one one of the major things here is um, that Sen, the main character here, had uh, effects for her uh, for her. Um, her attacks. So there was an effect for the up, down, left, right for those attacks. And also, um, you know, adding things like hit shakes and um, and combo finishers. There's combo <laughs> finishers in here, but it's mainly for uh, the her move waterworks. And it's, oh, a sim yeah. sim it's actually it's up, up, down, down, which is the combo. And the first time you do it, it doesn't work. Yeah, and this <laughs> particular. Well, now I'm gonna have to try it twice. I just, I just, I just got this weird thought in my head. It's like, if you wanted to, you could almost convert this into. I don't even know what you would call it. Like, you could actually turn this into just like it'd be an RPG, but then instead of being like a turn-based thing, you could just make it so it's like what you have, except Street Fighter matches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard you say. <laughs> your sprite work is so amazing, it just reminds it me of Street Fighter. Oh, cool. Oh, neat. So then, wow. So the combo 
you you actually do the melee attacks and then she does a spell right at the end. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's so cool. In the final version, we so he mentioned Street Fighter. Because in the final version, we was going to have like um, hyper portraits whenever you do like, I believe we do combo finishers. We are yeah. going to do like hyper portrait and you know the and, whole. And there's going to also be combo finishers. Yeah, too, combo so. finishers that we all. That we, wow. So gonna, it's going to be like spells. As a matter of fact, we didn't want it to be spells, but um, that's what we were testing it with and it yeah. looked pretty good. So we were mm -hmm. like, oh, let's just keep it that way. Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, Fleet and Infinity, Fleet, Fleet and Infinity had uh kind of gave us the idea for by suggesting we look at the game Xeno Gears, which good game, had, yeah, which had a system very similar to, to what we put in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thinking of the the Blitz Rush and all that. At first, at first we were going to do something that was way closer to uh, Legend of Dragoon, but as we went around and we talked to a lot of people, a lot of people wouldn't actually like that type of thing because it's because it's more like uh they figure it's more like um qtes rather than you actually being and, yeah and a lot of people said that they don't like like um, yeah the fast paced thing in their turn-based rpgs so we kind of switched it up so hopefully it's good for everybody yeah what you guys have now is a really interesting mix From what he's been playing so far, except for the worm being on the tree, <laughs> it's better than I thought it was going to end up being, <laughs> compared to what uh, we had in mind. Well, hopefully he doesn't die, though. Yeah. Oh, he got <laughs> Yeah, yeah, rub We've it in, in. <laughs> we, We've already just established from previous games that if we ever die, it's our fault. We just need to get better. Oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's not your fault. It's our this fault. This part is a, is a lot harder than um, Dragon's part. Yeah, that's, uh, I was going to bring that up because when we played, when we guys had you on the show before, it was uh, Yegen that we were watching. So it, um, are you planning on having many stories told through the perspective of different people? They they all meet up at, at a point. And uh, we were, it's, oh man, it's, all right. So you have your main. I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can run jump the waterfall. Um, waterfall. So if you run to the left and then jump right before you hit it. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. There. Oh snap! You can actually jump. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we could do that before. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm either. sorry, but you know, I'm, you're just. I'm so used to playing all sorts of games where you think that a person would be able to move their legs down like this and then go like that. <laughs> but it just seems it's, so incredible. Like they must have like no knees or, or something. I don't know. Stop. The voice acting. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's <laughs> another woman. <laughs> so you're always from now on. It you're gonna always start with uh, this 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 woman. No, you, you're you're still gonna start off um, and jagging part reworked, of course. Interesting. Okay, so it's not like it's not like the not like the demo. So, um, but the story, yeah, yeah, the, here again, um, the way that's sort of fighting, that's, is, yeah, that's like, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really need to make, like, the diagonal sprites for her. So yeah. So can put that in. So, with the story, one of the things that, uh, like, we don't want to do is have side quests that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. And even when you're in dungeons and things like that, we want everything to have purpose, to have something to do with something. We don't want anything to be like, why am I doing this? Why is this here? Why do? Why should my character care? Mm -hmm. So, through each different type of uh, mission that we have, there's always some significance to do with. Yeah, that's a nice little uh, effect thing that wouldn't get there, and she whips it out, and then the fight begins. So, through um. Oh man, so much. Oh, no. oh yeah. Yeah, that. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, fleeting that. That's actually a complete thing. We were still like, we were still working on that. But um, that's one of the many things in this demo that's uh, not a hundred percent. But I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get into the story, but I'm overwhelmed by everything that's in. 
What happened? What happened? Something happened. <laughs> I think we might have broken the game. Yay! <laughs> oh, did they? We've yeah. done our job. <laughs> oh, no. So it should be good. Yeah. It's okay. We're professionals. Oh, they yeah. broke it. Oh, you know. I know. <laughs> like what? canes of glass. <laughs> the games that we have. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Is that random? I think that's random, Miles. I think that's random, yeah. Well, yeah. we have time to get there again. We have more than enough time. Oh, yeah, we have lots of time. And I'll try to There's lots of game. I'm, I'm, I'm really confident. <laughs> I'm really confident on the, on the lift of this demo now. <laughs> you know what I just realized? I, I was looking at that screen there, and I was wondering why she was uh, so large and talking to a bunch of midgets. But it was mushrooms. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's just my eyesight. Uh, you have know. you been eating mushrooms? <laughs> I have totally not eaten any mushrooms, but I have had enough energy drinks today to see through time. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's a dim future. No, so, I can I can see through time at the uh, speed of normal time. Ah, yeah. Time travel. So, <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Trex. <laughs> yeah. So the story. The story is based around. You know, uh, Jagan actually coming and finding Sin here, and uh, at the beginning, they kind of, uh, as, well, when you get to that part, you will see, because Jagan, because we want you to, when you ever you see a character, you meet a new character, we want you to ask the question, why did they do that, or, or if, if you ask that question, or why, then we, then we've done our job, you're asking questions about the characters. I remember when we did the demo the first time, they were one, you know, people asked us questions like, why did Jagan accept her, uh, why did Sin accept Jagan in her house that easy, and why did Jagan feel as though he would make a turnaround like he would? And um, from that, kind of pretty much spewed the first demo that we did. It was like, hey, we want to kind of explain um, why Jagan did what he did, or why would he be the type of person that he is. And a lot of that is going to get explained through the game. I believe he mentioned the thing about his wife, and and with the character that we want to kind of push as a character who wants to do the right thing, but he still in the back of his mind has however he grew up and and what was told to him is always still there. So he would still try to be that person and not believe everything that was told to him, but at the same time he always considers it. And we kind of want to experiment with a, with the character that and kind of make him kind of make him grow and kind of make him uh, uh, do different things based on that. So the story is based around we because we like the games. I'm not sure you're familiar with Sweeter Than Two. Oh yeah, it was a it's a very personal story. It's not really about the world, but it's really more about the characters and how they interact with each other and things like that, and how things change, and how a uh, very fun game. And the story is one of the best stories I've ever seen in an RPG. So we kind of wanted that personal story, but we also wanted um, a, m a mixture. Yeah, a mixture of you know big, big real world uh, things going on. So yeah, cool. well, not real world, but big fantasy things uh, going on. I really love that animation when it leads into this fight when that she is like, cool, fires yeah. the ice. That's so neat. And this this scene is in is. Polished as it should be. I remember when a fleeting has uh, he said something about it. It's definitely not as polished as it should be, and it, it doesn't go fast. And that's one of the things that me and Whitney get into when she she does something. I'm like, no, you gotta do it like this, and you gotta you gotta pan in this, and you gotta zoom in here. And because I'm the action guy, she's more with the story. He's more of the director. He kind of told me how it's supposed to look, and I'll try my best to make it that and way. And get frustrated. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick question. I just fought Whitney again, and I beat her this time. Is that like mm -hmm. a separate... Because when she beat me, it went to another cinematic where I started talking. When I beat her, I literally kicked her off the waterfall. Is that like... <laughs> there's options and stuff that you can go you into. You went Sparta even, on yeah. her. But even with yeah. these scripted events. That, that is supposed to happen. Yeah. Cool. Either or, she did the same thing happen, right? Or, or different. Thing. It's supposed to be the same thing because yeah. she, she the the main difference was she says that hurt. That's gonna be way <laughs> more polished, way more polished than it appeared there. So <laughs> this is a, this is a true this is a true alpha. 
<laughs> or better. This is a true better from what we actually were going to show today. But we don't you don't worry about that because we we've, we've played earlier than Alphas. Oh really? <laughs> we played some games that were poison, you might literally finished the day that we uh, yeah the, the played them. So I mean, sorry, what was that, Ian? If you're poison, you might want to avoid all of those worms. Because yes. you die, have to do it over again. Yes, I was thinking that. Like, um, how often are the like save points? Nick's going around, he's trying to use the uh, the um, the skill on, on a bunch of things that he sees. I yeah. like to see it. Okay. I like seeing him experiment. And that makes me want to put more things where you can actually do something. Yeah. Okay. How often do you get to save in the game? Huh? How often do you get to save in the game? Um... Well, this, there's a save point, right? Yeah, there's a save point here. in oh. like the next map. So but it's, the, just don't go left. Whenever <laughs> anything major happens, and more than like in in every city, but whenever anything major happens, you can save. It's very often. It's just mm. that we don't have a save where you can just save, oh, oh, save, 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 save. Yeah. Save, save. I'm so relaxed by this pan flute. Oh, you hear? Oh, yeah. Oh, they. Oh, they can hear. Oh, that's right. Mm. They're in the stream. We can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we can hear the music, and it's, it's it delightful. It's music in the game. Also, uh, do you hear the voice acting, too, or is that off? No, it's off right now. Oh, it's off. Okay. Just curious. That's why we added our <laughs> super amazing at voice acting to this. I can turn it on, though. By the way, we are, um, we are available. <laughs> yeah, as always, we're available for voice acting. We are available to offer horrible the voice acting. <laughs> we need our med. If you guys okay. have any hey, roles for, com for for comedic like gnomes or something, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty sure if we ever tried a, a serious role, we would just, we would kind of like ruin the game or something. How how do I use the the save point, or is it an automatic? Oh, it, it's the it, save point is up to the up to the right of the yeah, there yeah, right there. Yep. Yeah. And then how? Oh, oh, it's not working. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not working. That's I don't okay. know why it's not working. We're playing yeah. hardcore mode. I That's think you why. should fight it. You should fight the save point. Be like, you're saving me. It's like, bitch, no. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how it opens and closes like that? I think that. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. <laughs> I really enjoy... I've been enjoying the story. Like, I've just been reading it kind of casually. But it's really interesting. It's... It's enigmatic enough and unique enough that it's really drawing me in. Like, I want to play more to figure out why people consider her a demon, who the yeah. readers are, etc., etc. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay, so we're going to keep going then. Okay, we're playing this hardcore mode. No. Ah! Oh! <laughs> well, this is really a different one. To, uh, to die this, in this is one of Whitney's best maps. That's she unfortunate. Put, <laughs> like <laughs> to me it's one of her best maps only because the way that she uh put like a like how she had a lot of depths of different things. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go. That's why that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. What is that? I think it's unable to find Unable to find graphics or graphic uh zero zero eight. Zero eight. Oh so close. Oh well. That's okay. Well, at least you know what you have to do and how to do it. I know what I must do and how to do it. <laughs> you know your path. Now how much walk it. before you guys started actually developing the game? How much writing and chatting and everything did you have to do about the characters and the setting and all that kind of stuff before you were comfort comfortable with actually writing these characters into the game? That's actually an interesting story. We both started off doing two different games. And um, she did her game and I did mine. My game, like I said, my game had like horrible dialogue. I showed it on the stream once. It was terrible. <laughs> any, any, anything like, it was like, it was just my game, just personal. So I didn't care about the uh, grammar or anything. I was like, yeah, this is, this is happening here. We're going to leave, Dad, Mom, goodbye. We're going to, like, stuff like that, you know. So my game was, my whole game, so she told me, 
She's like, she pretty much told me that my game was just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I played her game, and I seen all the potential that she had in her game, which was Demon's Revenge. But she had like a lot of silly things going on. Like she had a desert town with like everybody was on a metal platform in the middle of the desert, and I'm like, everybody's gonna die. Feel <laughs> the metal platform said, "How about it? Just make sense." But with her characters, she showed me the characters. Whitney's good at writing the base of a character, mm. and she loves to write tragedy for them. Mm-hmm. And I guess in a way, you know, but that's just it. She can write. She can write outside of the character. She can't write the core. So when it came to writing the core for the character, I came and I seen what she, had, whatever she had done, and I see what she tr- would want to do for the story and I kind of implemented a little thing little things in um, in real world situations and I said hey she would act like this since she was taken out of school at this age and she kept being kidnapped her education is not all that great so she would kind of want to be in the type of person that she is she'd be uncomfortable around normal people and since she'd be uncomfortable around normal people the way that she react be different she still would have a child's mind because that's all she was able to able to experience and I kind of worked that into personality where she's aggressive you know uh, she's you know she doesn't want people to get close even though that she longs for uh, another human being or somebody who, who like her and then another thing that it's kind of the miss is kind of more towards with the whole school she never really felt close to any human maybe except for her brother because that was the person that she spent the most time with and um, you know, but she never felt close to any human, even when she was considered, uh, I don't know if it was mentioned, well, I'm, I'm starting to give some stuff away, but she, that's, you know, and then we go into things like that, Jagging, she, she wants to kill, she wants everybody in the game to have some sort of, like, dead relative. Her, it's, a, it's a tragic backstory. She, tragic backstory for everybody. I had to completely change one character. I said, we can't, she wanted to kill a character off. And then when I said don't kill her off, then she wanted to kill the character the husband. And I said, hey, you already got a character wife die. Why don't I have to double down and have this character husband die? So I took the one character. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't put her in a situation where it was tragedy, and I didn't put her in a situation. I did put her in a situation where she lost something. She wanted something, but then somebody took it away from her, and mm-hmm. now she she goes and and now because I don't want to. That's kind of a spoiler. I didn't want her to go into a thing that uh, actually um, was like a generic. None of the characters I wanted to have generic stories. But when he just went to scare everybody off, I don't understand it. Everybody had to die. I even said I saved the main character. She wanted to kill the main character. So what are we doing right now? Right now I'm just getting that missing file in the game. If you want to uh, keep talking. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Infinity says, one thing I might honestly suggest, though, is an actual difficulty system. I think, well, when we were doing it, I think uh, everything is going to be kind of stream. I think we're going to make it too hard and not going to be too easy. It's just going to be like a nice, comfortable RPG experience. That's what most people like. I mm-hmm. think we're going for what most people would, would prefer to play. That will all that will be... If it was up to me, it'd be hard as heck. Yeah, <laughs> we play dra- we play Dragon Age on Nightmare Mode, and we love to die and figure out strategies in order to beat the Quinari that's immune to every single piece of fire that you had. You could always so. consider something like <laughs> you could always do like a compromise. Say, put in a normal mode, and then um, if a person manages to beat it, you can you know mm-hmm. add like you've just unlocked Master Quest mode or something. The like biggest, re- the biggest reason I would not want to do that would you would kind of alienate people if you have it like unless you reword it in a way you say hey this is easy mode or this is normal this is normal. Well, no, I, so, I think so, the the way that uh, people have done the the sort of the alienating is I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but I've yeah. seen this happen a couple times where you play a game and as you die, it offers you a chance to switch to easy mode. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Dragon and slightly condescending, but understandable. That's, it isn't always needed, though. Yeah. Very often that's not always needed. 
but you'll find games like Dark Souls, something like that. It's well known for being difficult, and yeah. that's, that's it's bread and butter. Mm -hmm. That's the selling point. But yeah, like, exactly. You can always, I mean, you can. I guess it's always an uh, interpretation of the person, but I mean, if you make normal mode and then say open up uh, difficult, like nightmare mode or uh, uh, impossible mode, once you beat it, I'd say that would be a, a fun option. <laughs> <laughs> Because to me, I, you know, see, like for example, with Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time, they had Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time. Then, uh, shortly after, they released the Master Quest, which was yeah. a totally ramped up uh, dungeon version of the game. And to me, I mean, that that was just fine. I, I thought that the the game itself, the original game, was plenty difficult. And then when the Master Quest came out, I said no, because I because I was bad enough at it. So, I, I don't see yeah. there being too much of an issue with that. But again, it's tweets their own. Yeah, issue. no doubt. <laughs> yeah, you appear to suck at this. Would you like to switch to easy mode? <laughs> <laughs> and I think a lot of times when I, there's my thing about the easy mode is, is when you do an easy mode, you may make it seem like a. Definitely like you're not getting the full experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it, you just call it the press A mode. <laughs> just keep pressing A and it does Only everything. Only one button! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that called? The space, uh, space bar? Yeah, space bar. Yeah. Like press one. space to continue. <laughs> okay, let's heal. <laughs> He should easy on the tree. <laughs> uh, Feeding says, though I do seriously think upon looking at this that it might be interesting to make it so the worm appears to be wound around the tree. Oh, that'd be interesting. That'd be yeah. hard to do though because that you've got random yeah. backgrounds, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the background here, like, uh, that, that goes in with the environment interaction thing, though. Like, if we want that to happen, we can have them uh, run into the tree and, stuff and do something like that. All you gotta do is uh, animate a platform on that tree. Or, sorry, not animate, uh, yeah, just draw a platform. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, who who did the music for this game? The, the guy who did the music of the game, his name is Mark. Mark. What's his last name? <laughs> it's Mark. It is music. Hard to just, pronounce, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Oh. We'll just call him Marky Mark. Hi? Makesh. Makesh? I think it's Makesh. I don't know. Put it in chat. <laughs> no, yeah. And did you, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, did you um, ask uh, him, or did you give him specifics, or did you just be like, this is what our, our game is about? Can you uh, sort of mold uh, a soundtrack around it? <sighs> Moment of truth. Well, we, we give him we give descriptions of each song, okay. and he worked with it. Damn it! Oh, excuse me. Hang on. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, dude, you can say damn. <laughs> we were playing the, that game last week, the adopted game, and then yes, all of a right. sudden just a bunch of F-bombs were dropped. I was like, oh! That was me. <laughs> they had to re she said you had to reset it. Before, yeah. Uh, and I think I need to change the file name. Our our artist does something something very similar, but he does it like at like a much, like, like like he can read our minds. We're like, hey, Ricky, we we need this this and the fourth, and and then he come back with something completely perfect or something that we didn't know that we wanted. And so like we give him like designs for stuff, and he like completely changed it. We're like, yeah, that looks good. Let's go with that. Hmm. All right. So, uh, yeah, we've restarted it now, Ian, and I yeah. renamed the. Hopefully, that's the, that's the lad. And, mm -hmm. and now, average gamer is the absolute champ of the first five minutes of this game. Pretty much, <laughs> I'm the king. I'm really sorry you had to play this part with so many times. Why? I I so <laughs> I'm so actually <laughs> thoroughly enjoying myself, tracks. Like yeah. the, your combat system gives this. Um, a ridiculous amount of replayability. I want yeah, to you can uh, try different things off, even at the very beginning, which is always yeah. a plus. I like that as um 
I like that you guys said that you like the sprites because I did all of them. <laughs> that must have been a lot of work because they are yeah, super high well, quality. It was a lot of work and a lot of uh, criticism coming from this one over here. <laughs> this one over yeah. here. This one. <laughs> And so the only thing that's hard, hard working with her is that uh, I'm like, um, so what should this look like? And she's like, I don't know, just do something. I'm like, it's your character. But what, <laughs> you, what I'm saying is, he's creative. Why doesn't he come up mm. with something? You know? Because men uh, have no it, fashion sense. It's <laughs> Yeah, there you go. And, and then... Uh, what is your character? If I do something that's not to your character, but you like, know everything about my character. You know, my my wife and I do the same thing though, where I'll I'll write a character and be like, "Can uh -huh. you draw this for me?" And she's like, "Okay, what do you want him to look like?" And I'm like, "Well, you're the artist. Just draw it." <laughs> but, <laughs> but it doesn't work like that. I found out it doesn't work like that because she exactly. she's done that. She'll draw the character and I'll be like. Oh, well, I didn't want to be that skinny. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Oh, man, I, I got that the very first time I drew Jag, and that was the first thing that, that, that she had me draw, because I asked her, I was like, so out of all the characters that you created, what is, like, your, your character that you most identify with? What is your favorite character? And she said, Jag, and he looks the same since then. And I drew him, and I thought I drew him good, and he's like, his ponytail isn't like that. I'm like, <laughs> what do you yeah. mean? It's a it's, ponytail. It's <laughs> difficult to try and communicate because um, you have an idea of it in your head, obviously. So, what do you guys find? You've obviously worked on this uh, long enough to hopefully have like a kind of system where... How do you break that up where somebody writes something and then you have to animate it or something like that? What is the system of how you get those creative ideas across? The whole bouncing back and forth. Kind mm -hmm. of. Okay. Well, Whitney comes up with a basic story and I go through and I play it and I say, hey, Something has to happen here, and that's that's basically where where it comes in with the map because um, there's a part to this to this uh, particular demo that probably should have never been there in the first place. Yeah. And this probably would have been a complete thing if it wasn't for that. Hmm. But yeah, Tara likes to add stuff in last minute, and then I have to try and work and then, everything and make it work together, and, and it doesn't. This time it just didn't work out. This time it didn't work out. <laughs> like, if, like if you remember the first demo, it was supposed to be a straight path um, past the uh, past the wolf over the tree mm -hmm. until the next map until the wolf den over. But then I like we should go in the water somewhere, <laughs> and mm. I'm like there should be a waterfall somewhere, and in the middle of the waterfall there should be this sparkling thing with the light coming down from in the mountain. You should be in the mountain, there should be this opening, the type of mountain, there should be this light coming down, it should be sparkling over there, and there should be this item in the middle of the mountain, and you should have to like cut down trees, cut down tall grass to get there. And now the reason why I say that is because you, when you, you want to reward exploration with visuals, and you want to also reward them with an item, so I'm like, this should be here. So I, it, would, it would be me putting like the extra things in there. The animation, Winnie just says, do it. it it's, it's, it's not. It's not like a. It's not like a. I, I tell him if if you give me the sprites, I'll put it in. Yeah, if you give me the. That's the system. Yeah. If okay. you give me the sprites, I will put it in. That's the, <laughs> that's the. That's that's exactly what she said. Simple and it works. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fingers crossed, everybody. Oh, oh, come on. oh. Going in the house. Oh. Oh. Come on, come on. oh. Yes! Yes! Got in there? We have yeah! Yeah. Wait, can we leave yeah, it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope there's no more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Star is gonna disappear. Oh, well, if you guess We that. are, yeah, we, we are professional playtesters. No, oh, yeah, totally. You know, professional playtesters find the, the errors in the code and then fix them. No, no, no. no that's, that's not how it works with us. <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're like the supervisors where we, we find out what's wrong oh, no. and they just uh, pass it off to someone else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You there. Uh, this is, yeah, you could just go fix that. It's okay. There you go, Ian. I sent you which file it is if you guys have it. This is a playtest stream. Yeah, gotta love it. 
Well, that, that's what goes into it. You like you can see just how difficult some of this can be. You know, I I, I was should have told you like don't touch anything in that phone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminds me we, we played the game Approaching Infinity and back in the early stages of the game um, I was flying around you know doing my thing and then uh, randomly in space I saw a goblet icon Oh. and I'm like what's that supposed to be and I pick it up and the game crashed he's like oh that's a placeholder it doesn't work don't touch it <laughs> so I mean perfectly fine to do that I mean it's yeah. fine. I, honestly, when it comes to the these kind of like bugs and missing things, it's yeah. not something to worry about. Like, we played a game that oh, God, actually yeah. uh, was seventy um, percent broken. Oh uh, really? An hour before we played it. Oh like, wow! Which one? Remember the plane one? Oh right. It we was a, a good it was an, that too. it was an iOS port. Yeah. And when we received the copy, um, what is it? Three out of, three out of the so five levels were actually show? upside down. <laughs> oh, really? And it was a first person, or it was a third person plane fighting game. I remember game. that. Yeah, but I mean, that's one of the things. Like, it's it's awesome because we get to see these games in development. We get to play them and show them off before anybody else gets to, which is so much fun. Oh, and yeah. this is one of the expectations of of doing that. It gives it more character. Darn tootin'. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to hear the voice acting. I turned it on. Oh, the cool. save point worked. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Well, the save one, when he beats uh, the Boy, I was totally off. <laughs> <laughs> Just a smidge. Just a smidge off that voice. Yeah, this one, this, this is Cecilia, yes. She did a really good job. But she's going to be playing. Um, she's going to be playing a different character named Mioni, and I think she's going to be playing a mirror also. What you got there, Jack? I found a cat. That's Jezebel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, the cat's taking my place for the rest of the show. Oh, okay. Whoa! Suddenly, views went up. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's what we've been missing all along. A cat cam. Okay, we're adding a third a third webcam and it's only gonna have wide angle Which shots of cats. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna break the internet. That was I love that though. That was really high quality voice acting. Um do yeah, you... I thought she was pretty good. We actually have uh that's another girl that we just got that we just uh got on a on the team, uh her name is Danielle McRae. She did voice work for um, StarCraft. Oh, wow. For, uh, World of Warcraft. For um, Skullgirls. Oh, holy crap. League of Legends. Oh, what's a No, who's League of Legends, I believe. So she did a bunch of um, video game work. Hmm. So, what, like, how do you get a hold of uh, people like this? Um, do you just. Uh, do you, did somebody give them uh, their contact uh, info and then just go from there? Or is there, you just choose from a list and say, help us? <laughs> she contacted us back in 2008, was it? Eight, 2009? No. 10? 2012. Like, what a 12 or 13, something like that. It's been a long couple of years. When we did <laughs> when we did our first Kickstarter, and I went back and I listened to uh, her voice reel, and I said, hey, uh, you want to do some voice work for my game? And she, she's like, yeah, she, she'll do it. Mm. That's pretty much it. But, but, the first, the but first, if we don't get contacted, then we'll put out uh, auditions. Uh, yeah, um, on a, what's the, what's it called? Uh, Voice acting, Alliance. Voice acting Alliance. When we got our first couple of guys, we we put out a uh, audition. We put out some lines for them to audition for, and we just take auditions. And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Oh, cool. Did some you get some very fun? Um, <laughs> was was there some fun uh, entries? Entries, yes. Oh, oh, there was some fun entries. <laughs> 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 It's it's funny. Some people uh, it's funny hearing what people pronounce the words wrong. I think I'm stupid. And especially when they pronounce them wrong and they include letters that weren't in the world in a word. You can like, 
Oh, how embarrassing. It's kind of weird Sorry, that you think that thing would, you know, proof... Yeah, proof <laughs> isn't there such a thing as proof listening? <laughs> it's like, one take, that's it. Nothing else, we're done. It's, it's really fun doing an um, audition for voice act. This is one guy, um... I'm not... Uh, you guys remember the actor Tony J, right? Yep. He, um, this guy, he did an impression of Tony J on uh, YouTube, and it, it wasn't quite Tony J, but it was it was almost there, and it was really hitting on, um, he, but you know, usually some of the, the greatest characters that we hear in animation are usually bad impressions of other people, <laughs> like a bunch of the characters on The Simpsons, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like bad impressions of, of actual people, like uh, the Mayor Quimby is like a bad impression of uh, JFK. Yeah, yeah. So, he did like this this impression of Tony J, and it sounds so unique, and it sounds so gritty. I, I asked him to do uh, some voice work for our trailer that's coming up, so that's going to be interesting. Cool. What would with of course with our much much better demo. Like <laughs> this is not really. I loved your guys' first demo, and this one yeah. is a, a, a huge improvement. So they, I'd love to a, see. Yeah. It's improvement in ways of like uh, the the sprite work is very much improved and uh, there's a lot more animation here, and also uh, we have more uh, gameplay features. But the other one had a lot of like Whitney was uh, you know she was nervous about putting this one out here because of a bunch of points that we actually made in the first one, which is it wasn't quite a linear experience. You, there was a bunch of branching paths for it, and yeah. uh, I thought I just felt like we with this demo we went a step backwards. Because but we, were, we also we, took steps we, forward. Yeah, we also took steps forward, but we went a step backwards when it came to like the, the more exploration parts. The number one thing, yeah. But the number one thing with this is polish. The first one was polished way way more than this one. And of course, this is this is some stuff we want to do a lot of things here, and you will see one if hopefully when you get underground, and you'll see like a lot of things have definitely changed. And you should have been a safe point. Oh well, you couldn't do it. My, my bad. Holy! <laughs> I would have loved to have done the same point. <laughs> so don't touch anything. Just enjoy. Just enjoy. Um. Ah! Oh, Damn! Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I did. did I not? Map 89 well, while he's doing that, uh, Infinity oh. asks what the image, what is the image That's my uh, fault. that you use on your profile for voice acting alliance? I think, uh, I Did I get the wrong image? No, I, oh. I labeled I, it wrong. I think I used the, uh, image of Corel. Well, one of my characters, Corel. I usually use that. It should be like a smaller sprite of it. Is he saying that he sees it and he wondering what it is? Yeah, I think that's what it is. He says he's semi-active on the, on that site. Because if he's act that's actually a that's actually a, my character who's in this who's he's part of this game and he's part of this universe. But that's my character that originally came from my absolutely terrible game <laughs> that I had made. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, uh, it's like a character that I had since I was a kid. I always had this character. You know, you know, when you were a kid, you make up a, or, or at least me and my brother did. We made up characters that like were like a lot like us. Like oh who yeah, we, totally. uh, like these characters pretty much represented. So my name is Tyrell. His name, his name is Corel, and he wore my favorite color. His hair was my favorite color. Nice. And they, but of course, things like that uh, advanced over the years, and he became much more of a deeper character. Even to the point where some of my likes end up in the character, and I didn't even know it. Yeah, I think we. I think well, considering your average gamer is such a huge RP, or I'm sure he has a character that um, personifies him. Uh, well, <laughs> my wife and I met on a role-playing mud, which is like a text-based game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would say that each of our characters kind of had um, pieces of ourselves. <laughs> I, you know, put lot, I put a lot of myself into Sterling. So. Yeah. 
I don't want to. I don't want to say I put a lot of myself into my first guy because he was he was a nut job. What? Rivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude was a nut job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all my characters had the very uh, the, the similar um, minor insanity. Oh really? <laughs> 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 I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of a weird person. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Whitney, had, Whitney, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with her way of making characters, which is pretty much on the spot. It's like, okay, we need a character for this. And then she's like, okay, this character does this. I'm like, where are you getting this from? You can't just come up with this on the spot. It has to be, you have to think about it. It just can't. You just can't say here. Here well, goes the character. You have to start off with something, right? Oh yeah. You could. Uh, I guess you could just take uh, just, I ideas from people that you've known in your life. Uh. Well, it's, yeah. A lot of times when I write, if I'm doing something like a play or something like that, um, I'll start off with how many characters I need, and the first thing I do is make the relationships between them all, of how they all oh. know each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's kind of my 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 um, diving board. That's where I jump in from. And that's different for everybody, I'm sure. I like the way we... That's actually one thing I really like the way that we work. I would write something out and it would be something that, like, to me it would be kind of compelling, but it wouldn't be written as well as it could. And then Whitney would just go in and she would finish it up and she would, like, put words where the words are supposed to go. <laughs> If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> oh Because I would try to, I would try to write things that sound more important than they actually are. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like um, and then it would kind of go off to some thing like, what are you talking about? Like I think I wrote the jag and it's like death is an illusion for a solution, and death we harbor our regrets and sorrow. Only in true mm. confrontation and justice can we confrontation, sorry, and justice can we free ourselves from this madness. And all I was trying to say is, we, we probably shouldn't kill each other. Yeah, <laughs> 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 let's not let's not kill each other. <laughs> yeah, probably. Oh, every relationship probably. has that. You know, <laughs> there's the occasional brandishing of knives and stuff. It's just, it's love. The it's love. love. It's, <laughs> it's compromise. It's you know, it's just, all that and stuff. But a little, a little bit of that was, um, you know, um, usually when you have characters in games and movies, they would, they would go, they usually take the first action against somebody that that does some wrong to them or does some wrong to somebody in their family. The first action usually will be revenge, and I think <laughs> what I'm trying to make Jag and say is that there's other solutions to it, and that by keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're gonna keep on going with the same circle, and nothing's gonna be solved. Hmm. So that's that's pretty much how I'm trying, and that's like the, some some of the writing I try to do, but Whitney helped me correct it and make it, you know, work. But well, I mm -hmm. hope it worked. And I don't want like I wrote something before like that in the last demo, and somebody said that uh, the game seemed like it was taking itself too serious. And I kind of like uh, maybe maybe I should like. Uh... But there's nothing wrong with serious games either. <laughs> you look at like Secret of Gaia or Secret of Mana. Secret uh, of Mana. <laughs> what? Oh my god! I think it still not it. Still not it. I was no, just that. that, that. I have. That kind of sucks. Like, this was the last thing I thought was going to happen. This is the very last thing. <laughs> yeah. I have that file, so now I'm not sure why it's not loading that file. That one said ground. One is over, one is ground. Mm-hmm. Is that it? I hope that's it. <laughs> the, Cause it, come on, we can't, we can't do it one more time. This has to be it. They gotta make it on the ground. Uh, what? Wh who was it? Um, this one's over. We had you were out of town, and we had uh, a bigger name 
Uh, one of my other favorites, Lost Orbit, was back. Lost Orbit. Yeah, Oops. and we had them in the show, and everything was just crashing in around them. We couldn't oh, even wow. get past the first level. Oh, really? Yeah, it was... It was uh, What did they do to it? Uh, it was just some unfortunate thing that they hadn't encountered before. Oh. So we really just had to chat. Just chat <laughs> for like an hour and a half. Yeah, I was I was unfortunately in Costa Rica, so I couldn't be around for that. That yeah, actually sad. It was I was very sad. I yeah. actually <laughs> I, I actually tried to to, yeah. to watch it while I was in Costa yeah, Rica. Yeah, yeah, you were here. I really hope uh, I really hope this fixes it because you know we have spikes on the ground and it's this minecart thing. Well, it, and I'm, I'm getting desperate, so I'm just gonna like send him the whole. And it's <laughs> and it's these cool like <laughs> like lighting effects that's down there. Oh yeah, no, you know I'm down with anything. And it's like this machine that comes on, and mm -hmm. I really hope you guys get to see it. And as usual, you know we want to have you guys back on the show. So. Oh yeah, with with, <laughs> with 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 the with the better product. I'm sure I we can pencil it. I'll definitely for, uh, as soon as it's, as soon as it's done, I will definitely send you guys a copy. Cool. And yeah. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be ten times better than this. Oh no, it's all good. I know I we're we're booking for April right now, um, yeah. and we got a couple slots left. We actually have some big games coming this month. I'm excited. Ah. Oh! Just got away from that worm. Ah. Okay. I'm getting better at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a secret. It's actually easier. It's <laughs> easier to escape if you walk. For some reason, I don't know. Oh, really? Is, is it? No, you somewhat. Can somewhat. It's because you, you're more. You're able to like control it easier. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you get yeah. At least I find it that way. Found it that way. <laughs> so. Right now, okay, so you, it, the love is there the level system in this? Does it do it directly affects um, the like the difficulty of the the monsters you fight, or is it just like areas have that, more difficult as it goes along? And that goes into us not wanting to do an easy mode because usually when you're in an area, most of the enemies are going to, are going to be around your level. So if you're, one, if you're one area and you're level three, they're going to be around level one, level two, level three, and level oh, four. Okay. So Crazy. even when you fight the boss, the boss is going to be level to that. So it's always going to be near your level. So we're taking away the grinding from the game. Oh, but okay. you still, you know, we still want you to get in some fights and everything and keep the game go and keep the game going. But you know, when when um when you uh, play in a game like this you want to kind of just keep keep it moving and a lot of people don't like the grind so we want to take that out and uh there's certain goals that we wanted to make with the game and that's one of the ones one of the big ones is taking grind out people don't like the grind at least from what i read Sorry, yeah, grinding is that. grinding is still possible. But you still get uh, experience. Different enemies have different uh, experience that you can get. Usually, it grinding is definitely possible because you you still would meet the enemies that are above your level. Like uh, it would be scaled that way. So every enemy that you face, you still get that certain amount of experience. Just that after a while, and that if you're in like a starting area, and the starting area is like will only be scaled to give you experience based on that once you go to a new area because you don't want to just go because the start area will have enemies that only have basic moves hmm. and you don't want to go to a starting area and then the enemies will still be on your level and you're having trouble taking down a start even though they're they're fairly simple to, to defeat mm -hmm. but uh, grinding is still possible yes because you can also face the epic monsters and you can find the epic monsters that's in the game and they they of course give uh, more experience Cool. Hmm. Like the bee, like, like the bee in the first demo. I'm not sure you guys fought the Hornet King. Yes, yes, yeah. we did. I remember that. 
Um, I was going to ask a little more detailed about the leveling system too. Is there going to be like um, what uh, customization as you level up or anything like being able to choose different abilities? Yeah, and and it really depends on whether you want the character to be more of a combo character and be able to do more combo finishers, or you want the character to be the type of character that uses a lot of like Sin has her combo moves and then she has her different type of water moves. She has the water works which attacks in the line and it makes the uh, the as you see the water comes up. And then she also has moves in which she kinda steals uh, life force with the bubble absorb. And that stuff will be in the in the moose tree which you do from afar. And the melee would actually have the combo finishes. So it's kinda building the character that you want to build from there. And you'll be able to put points in different things like that and also points on on your defense and your attack and for each level that you uh, I believe we changed it a bit because it kind of got a bit um, complicated but we changed I believe Whitney went back and said you only have um, experience because you get experience from what is it Whitney you get experience from when, when you use your weapon right or you use your or you use your melee and then you get so you can upgrade a so that's also based on how you play. So you would get experience if you do a lot of me you do a lot of melee, you get experience for your melee. If you do a lot of skills, you get experience for your skills. So depending on how you use them too, and then you put your points important to where where it is. I think it worked. Yeah, it worked. It worked. Yes. So what you what what average gamer will do is you'll just put everything into strength. Oh, he said he was decimated by the hornet. King. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was decimated by the hornet. King. He was beatable. He was beat. The hornet king was beatable at first, Steve. But then um. Now you were like, well, we want him to be beatable yeah. later on. But, but Whitney made right him now. beatable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. I actually yeah, went and on, got some stuff. One of those creatures that you come back to. And you and you know he's there, and you just have to beat him. Okay. Oh, all right. We're getting so we're getting somewhere now. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Somewhere here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Come to see. I, 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 really, I really want you guys to hear this. This I think this is one of the best battle things that uh, Mark has made. Turn me on the wrong day, Ritter. What you're not even to do. Could we have been wrong? What? <laughs> Can you speak up? <laughs> uh, is the voice acting on because yeah. the, the um Yeah, I think the voice sound, acting is on, yeah. The sound oh, yeah. is thickly, uh, No, no, voice acting is off. Right oh, no. oh it's off. Okay. okay, good, because he's really quiet. Like, oh, yeah. You can to hear him anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> so you can know. You're I my love, friend. You have a quiet voice actor. All I hear is, oh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> he's mumbling. What? What was that? Are you Batman? I'm here to kill you. Where are you going to kill me? Where is she? Consider it. Oh, I don't want to kill Jagan. Oh, did he kill him? Did he beat him? Is there a wild Jagan in here? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. He can heal. He, can go for he just he healed. Can Maybe you should learn that maybe healing helps instead of just beating people up. I didn't need to heal. <laughs> Wait. Yay, we didn't kill him. <laughs> what? Well, he's we gonna die anyway. I mean, it just, <gasps> it just appears like he died. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers! No! <laughs> I can't see him already. There's a there's a very awkward scene in the house what? when uh, when she yeah. I want to see if it, say something about it. <laughs> Every time I see it, I crack up. It, it <laughs> <laughs> I, really want I, think, to I think I'm just immature. I think I'm comfortable with this to the house. Now, I'm very comfortable and I'm excited to hear it. With the this is pretty much uh, a story here. <laughs> oh, did we get there? Yeah, we just. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask him about this part too because you said something about uh, what's going to happen. Did she not walk up us? 
Yeah. I think so. I think yours is faster than mine. It's crazy, I'm leaving. The first is for the Vodemir Brothers. Mm-hmm. No, I want the same go to find you. Just go inside. And today, <laughs> as, as an easy kill for you, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll make sure nothing happens to you. I'm a man of my word. I can't believe I'm listening to you, Ritter. If you try anything, it will be your head. I will not hold back. If anything should happen to you, I would gladly give in. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you all a question? So, does this, does that seem like mantic situation? Seem like a witch, sorry? Did that seem like a romantic situation? I, I think it was touching on it. Okay. Did, did you think so? I told him, I told him he's supposed to take her hand, but he made it so that they both, like, touched hands, like... <laughs> I didn't think that would be romantic, though. It, I told I you guess it, it looked, did, yeah, it I looked guess, yeah. extremely romantic. Because it, it wasn't was, supposed to it be. It was supposed to be more like... Yeah, um, more more dire. Get, trying to get her trust. Mm-hmm. Is her head... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... I was telling... Kind of, I was actually telling Winnie that this part should be zoomed because you, like, when you first go into this map, is where are they? You know, and they're actually in the chairs and the and the table that's to the right. Yeah, but <laughs> you still see the chair is going through her head. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> I'm not concerned about that. <laughs> this is way better than going into a room and then breaking down. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> we're we're hey, to see I'm this. just happy that the room is loading. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, please. I, w- <laughs> I really hope that there's no more map missing errors. Oh, what else? We've had worse and we'll have even worse sir <laughs> errors on the job, so. You see, in the text alone, it's not romantic. So No, 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 no. It's not supposed to be. It's a- but the way you the way you sprited it made it seem like you know they were gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> what what does everybody in the chat think? Do you think them holding hands like that was romantic or no? Um, I think it's exposition <laughs> for possibly something happening. Exactly. I think it's it's opening it up there, right? He's he's being very sincere. And saying, okay. well, he, you can he, tell that our wife just died. Situation. That he's expecting. <laughs> oh, the two of them are very upset about the situation. He's that they're just in and they're exploring fed up with it, right? the the, the yeah. chivalry. One of the the, the many uh, forms of chivalry. The two of them are upset with the situation that they're kind of put in here, <laughs> and they're both trying to figure a way out. So, I mean, the fact that but you're you're touching that their yeah. relationship is going to become closer because of the situation that they're in. So I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing that that's there, but I mean, if you strictly well, wanted to take that out, then yeah, yeah, the touching of the hands could be that's, construed as slightly that's romantic. Not a good thing. Okay. <laughs> it's not for it wouldn't be foreshadowing anything. Yeah. So you're saying you never know, but no. I can, conv- I can convince you otherwise. No. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> It was totally not meant to be romantic. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be romantic. (laughs) No, no, yeah, totally. But but, um, I wanted it to be like a, like a more of a establishing trust kind of thing. You are really missing a treat with uh, the voice acting on this part with Sonara. (laughs) She's not aligned still. Oh yeah, I forgot, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's... And then her battler. I just want them to get to the camera. Yeah, That's what I want. Her battler. <laughs> <laughs> I like the dialogue in this part. Did I write this or did you write this? Oh, this is tense. I, I believe I wrote this. You wrote this? Yeah. This was. Look, look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
they passed it. So I, I didn't uh, think I it was. So we good with that. We're okay. good. Okay. We're good. That All right. That's good. <laughs> The music is suiting the mood uh, pretty good, too. It's really yeah. tense. Yeah, it is. That's actually Samara's yeah, that's theme. That's her theme, yeah. Skeletons in the basement. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> maybe she really was. <laughs> maybe she really was dangerous. <laughs> uh, -uh. She's like, oh, it's just a Halloween thing. Don't worry, I just want yeah. to keep my Halloween. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I really like the expressions I did for on this part of this track from the Adam. Even though you use them all in the wrong situation. <laughs> uh -oh. Do the uh, uh -oh. do the the faces oh, of our Oh, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> I was gonna say, do the faces oh, they, oh, on the uh, on the. Thing, so. <laughs> Do the faces on the text screen, like when they're talking, do they do the do the expressions change based on the situation? No, but that no. Really, really wants them to. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to fight. No. And if uh, it's a uh, Sonara's audio hit one. Snap. Sonara didn't have any voice. Yes, she did. No, well, she didn't. She had the Maggie voice. I didn't remove Maggie's voices. Uh, oh, it's all good. It's all good. 10.53. You yeah. made it to the caverns. Yep. No, he didn't. He didn't go in it. <laughs> he didn't go he didn't see the spikes. He didn't see the mine car. He didn't see the machine. He didn't turn on the lighting effect. The funny thing is that Trexel has now set up the biggest teaser that we've ever had in the game. So <laughs> much so that he's teased himself. <laughs> So now, now we gotta go. Now we gotta go back, put the boss in, and then and, we gotta make. And now we gotta go lock you guys down for another show in the next few <laughs> weeks, because yeah. now I want to see more. <laughs> it, well, it, if we have out. we have a lot of time. Yeah, we can. Um, I'm sure we can fix everything. Yeah, oh. yes, but <laughs> Sonic Rider <Rock and> Shades. <laughs> we have the Muster in this. This is going to be the craziest thing. I'm gonna, just because I just feel so bad about this. We're going to make it. <laughs> Spikes, minecars, machines, okay. dinosaurs with lasers. Oh, wait, that's a different game. <laughs> it's like a really weird Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Thanks, Infinity. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's 8.54 here, so I think we're probably yeah. going to call it there for now. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to thank you both for being on the show, as usual. Um, it's always nice, because we're usually talking to you guys on the other side when you're in the audience yeah. room. So it's always nice to pull you guys out and bring you back on the show. It was a delight! We, we, we're just happy that you guys had a lot of patience. We were, uh, you can't imagine that we were stressing that um, a lot of things... That actually, uh, of well, course. all the things that we were expecting to happen that went wrong, <laughs> didn't. and then we had this other completely thing to go wrong from. <laughs> That's okay, though. That's okay. That's you can see how much work it is going into game development. Just the amount of stuff that you need to worry about is is ludicrous, and sometimes. And uh, one thing that I I really wanted to see. It's really cool to see that you guys had the successful Kickstarter and how far you've come already in just a few, I think it's been, what, a month or two months? It can't have been that long since your Kickstarter three, ended. Three, three November, months? November, I think three you did say you finished in November. So three months, and that that's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So, um, again, thank you guys so much for being on. I'd love to uh, bring you on, like, monthly, because I love this game, and I want to see... 
uh, the development as it comes out. You know, whatever you're you're coming yeah. with, obviously. Well, but as, as soon as as soon as the second we get everything right, we're gonna send you you for you to copy the demo so you can make sure everything works. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> then we then we definitely want to come back on. Definitely. And, and have a lot more fun. Yeah, you know, a lot I, more fun. I did have fun more, more content. I did like to hear that um that that you like the story and that it kind of gets you intrigued because I was watching a stream on a game called Grim Fandingo. Oh, and I was, yeah. watch, I was watching the stream and it was actually, a, I guess they're not a stream, but a gameplay, uh, a YouTube channel. I guess they're Let's they, Play. Let's Play. The Beer Brothers was playing um, Grim Fandingo and I was like, shut up! I want to hear the game. <laughs> it was so. It was such a good game, and the dialogue was so good, and it drew you in within like the first five seconds. You're like, "What's going on here?" And I'm glad that you kind of seen a little bit of that in our game. And, mm hmm Definitely. Yeah. Um, and and you know another good way. Actually, no, I'm not even gonna. I was gonna make a joke, but it's not funny. <laughs> oh yeah. It's not funny. I'm I'm just gonna do myself a favor and shut up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that being said, though, um, I want to say thank you guys so much again um, from everybody here at Average Giants and IGM. Uh, thank you to all our viewers. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to check in the link below. If you want more information on Demon's Revenge, I've got their link right there. So um, until next time, guys, I guess uh, that's it for us. Yeah. yeah. What? That's what I thought. Okay. That's, that's your outro <laughs> now? I, yes. Th thank you very much. It was thank a, it was a God, delight. Yeah. And Hope to see you next week. Hope to see you soon. Hope, yeah. hope, hope everything's just all, you know, rainbows and sunshine. <laughs> all right. Much love, guys. We'll see y'all then. Later. Bye.